John Byrne is, without question, one of the all-time comic book greats. He helped turn the uncanny X-Men into superstars during his legendary run on that book. He revitalized and reinterpreted Superman for DC Comics in classic fashion, and his five-year stint on the Fantastic Four is considered, alongside Jack Kirby and Stan Lee's run, the gold standard for that series. He welcomed us into his studio and gave us a tour of his incredible collection of original comics art. John, what I think is especially interesting about you is that you're not just a comic book creator, icon, legend, whatever you want to use. Legend. But you're also, <laughs> let's go with legend. Let's go with legend. But you're also a fan yes. of the medium. And Big fan. you can tell by your studio slash uh, museum here, <laughs> uh, as, as we, we step inside here, uh, wow, you've got some great comic art here on the walls from a little book from 1976. You Something know. like that. Yeah. It was a minor success back minor, then, the Superman, yeah. Spider-Man team up in the, in the classic treasury book. What's the story behind these and how'd they end up on your wall? Oh, well, um, let's see. This one I had just bought at a con for a ridiculously small amount of money. And then this one, another collector needed money and he called me up and said, I can give it to you for this much. And I said, well, I'll give you two thirds of that. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> Negotiating. And so we got that. What, what's it like um, having these, these pieces of art from books that you remembered picking up off the shelves, even while you were already in the industry? Because in, at that yeah. time, you were already you know, going full, full, full guns blazing. Oh, sure. But this business. particular book was such a big deal. Even those of us in the industry were just amazed that it was happening. And of course, there's all the, I don't know if you know the story that Neil Adams repenciled all the Superman figures because everybody wanted it to be the best it possibly could be. It was a true team effort. It, yeah, you, probably the last was time. It was Ross Andrew, Dick Giordano. Ross Andrew, Dick Giordano, Terry Austin on the backgrounds. And this was probably the last time something like this could have happened without the lawyers going nuts. So over here, yes. this is something that I believe has special significance for you, a, a Dick Sprang. Yes, Batman. this is a Dick Sprang recreation of the first page of the first Batman story I ever read. So I was like six years old. And when I met Dick, I asked him if he could recreate it for me. And I asked him to please sign it, Dick Sprang, not Bob Kane. <laughs> That's pretty amazing, like to the, to the letter. I mean, oh, yeah. everything's hand lettered here, yeah, right? Everything is, is just, yeah, he did the whole thing. And he made a couple of tiny changes, just so it was obviously not the original page. Like on the uh, original, this guy's not making a fist. You know, but it's just enough that you can't pass it off as the original, which I wouldn't know. How do you remember that was the first comic of Batman you ever read? Because it blew me away. The Adventures of Superman TV series with George Reeves had introduced me to Superman. And then in a fish market in England, I saw some comics on sale, and one of them had Superboy. And I thought, this must be connected to Superman, right? So I, I bought that. I was six years old. And it had Superboy, it had a Johnny Quick story, and it had uh, this, the Map of Mystery, Batman story. And that just blew me away. Batman, the whole concept. Just, and the Dick Sprang art blew me away. And uh, Dave Gibbons, years later, told me that that comic was probably an Australian reprint called Super Comics. Mm. So. The power of nostalgia. Yeah, it is, you know. I want to talk about uh, some of the other things here. Uh, There's a few things. You have a few, one or two or a thousand, thousand little statues and books. Why do you have so many? And two, does it bring out the kid in you to have all these little statues here in your studio as you're sitting at the table working? Yes. <laughs> I have so many because, you know, OCD. But when these things started coming out, I wasn't buying comics anymore. And they were like the thrill of the hunt with comics. You know, every month there'd be a new a new something that had come along, and so very much felt like collecting comics again. And then, of course, because I'm me, I had to go nuts. Now, you're clearly a, a Batman fan. Bit of a Batman fan. Bit of a Batman fan. I love the fact that you not only have Batmite twice, twice, but because you're a completist, you have Ace the Bat Hound. Ace the Bat Hound. You gotta have Ace. Now, something else here that, that's catching my eye, uh, that looks like Neil Adams. Well, Batman. yes, as I often say, if you have to have two Batman pages by Neil Adams, you know, if you have to, you might as well have the origin story. You may as well. <laughs> you, know? you may as well. Interesting fact that I, that I learned while researching this. You and Neil have never actually worked together? We've never worked together. How is no. that possible? We hate each other. It's the only thing I can think of. Lie, that's lies. That's a lie. That's, that's a, a lie. lie. 
No, it's just those pads, aside from the fact that I would be so intimidated, um, it's just never happened. You guys should rectify that. You guys are both still doing amazing art. That, that could change. I'll get Neil to ink the X-Men book that I'm not doing. <laughs> Now, you, you have a lot of Wonder Woman stuff. Yes. I know you have a, an affinity for that character and for that dude over there. Super. Super whatever. Superb man. Well, I'd buy the Wonder Woman um, because she's so underrepresented. And so I buy just about every Wonder Woman figure that comes out just to say, please, do more. You know, mm -hmm. this is Wonder Woman. She deserves the attention. These days, of course, she gets the attention. You've got the life-size one over there, for example. Now... John, I know uh, amongst this uh, pile of, of great comic book uh, graphic novels here, there's one here that has a, a little special meaning for you because it takes you way back to when you were six to years when old. when I was six years old. Well, I was introduced to Superman. They read the right by, one? Yep, by the TV series. And then I saw this in the window of a shop on Main Street in the town I lived in, in England. And this this is not actually the one I bought. This is, I had to replace it. But this is a black and white reprint annual and that is really what got me pointed toward comic books and then a few months later i found a comic book with batman in it and that hooked me forever so there it is that's where it began that's where it began yeah in england when i was six i'll do it you can do it it's your it's your bookshelf and now of course because you do i have two of them <laughs> John, you're, you're surrounded here by artistic examples of some of your contemporaries, but also a lot of your, your heroes who you were a fan of when you were just well, a wee lad. All right? these people who were better than me, yes. Well, that can all be debated, but you have some great examples. Jose Luis Garcia Lopez with one of the best Superman images ever. Ever. You have some amazing Joe Kubert art. Five Joe Kubert pieces, uh, three of which are Hawkman from the Silver Age. One is from the very first Hawkman appearance in the Silver Age, so it has very special what? significance to me. What, uh, what kind of influence did Joe Kubert have on your art style and how you approached uh, um, comic storytelling? There was, there was a long period when my line, my brush line, was starting to resemble Joe, and I was just loving it. And then, as is unfortunately always the case, it went away and was replaced by something else because I can't seem to stay in one place. Collecting comic art, is it just for nostalgic purposes? Do you, do you get inspiration from it? Do you learn from seeing the line art from, from some of these guys? All uh, of the close? above. All of the above. I mean... These pages on my walls here, they are significant to me or, and or, they are historically significant to the industry and or they're just cool pages, you know, they're just beautiful art. Um, so all three of those factors uh, drive my collection. The four Superboy pages you have here from a Silver Age Superboy story, what's the story behind how you got that? That is the story that introduced me to Abraham Lincoln of whom I am a big fan. Um, and I just found those four pages, like on eBay or somewhere, one at a time, and bought them extremely cheaply. And then I think somebody must have realized somebody was buying them because I saw the last page and it was more than those four combined in price. So I guess I'll never have the whole story. But you've got four. I got four you've out of got six. Four, and that's better than nothing. Yep. I believe we can just call this the Kirby display of your studio. I call it my Kirby corner, KK, right? A lot of pages of special significance to me as well as historical significance. This page here, um, my art agent, Jim Warden, was here several years ago with his son. It happened to be his son's 13th birthday. And I said, well, I bought the comic that this was in on my 13th birthday. So imagine if I could go back to my 13-year-old self and say, someday you will own a page from that comic. And my 13-year-old self would say, I own the whole thing. I just bought it. I just paid a quarter for it. Come on. Because <laughs> I had no clue in those days about original art. You know what's fascinating to me about this? You got a rare Jack Kirby Spider-Man drawing. Yes. Yes. And, uh, of course, that page is inked by Ditko. Okay, be honest. Every once in a while, do you stop and you say, and you get all like I do. fanboy nerdy I about, do. about I do. some of the great stuff you have here. I do. A few years ago, uh, one of the one of the zines interviewed me, and they had a picture of me in my studio, my then studio. And they said, "Here's John Byrne with some of his breathtaking collection of art." And I read that, and I went, "Yeah, you know it is. <laughs> it is." Because sometimes I stand here going, "Wow." 
<laughs> and my 11-year-old self and my 14-year-old self come out and go, wow. It also must be kind of nice to see a lot of the characters that you helped create and revitalized here in this place. Oh, look, there's Terex. There's Terex. Oh, there's She-Hulk. Well, there's, this is one of the fun things about these things. Uh, more at Marvel than at DC is that I can walk along and go, mine, 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 mine. And they're all real Marvel characters, but I created them. That's such a hoot, even after 112 years in the business. You know, it's, it's still amazing.